Yellow. Despite the ruthless monster he had to become in perhaps one of the most ruthless places permissible in civilized society, what truly made Conor McGregor remarkable was that he never played the victim throughout. Never did he complain about the rules when it came to his endeavors. He did not care about the restrictions under the narrative of to hit and not get hit against the greatest boxer to ever do just that. He didn't ask for any changes in the rules. He didn't even care about what gloves were used. To believe he could make it happen regardless, trusting in his spirit and in his mind, his work ethic, regardless of how you feel about Conor McGregor. This is something we can all learn from because even though he did fail, Look at how far this mentality took him. To give back to the people who gave so much to him. He's done more than just that. And if he blamed his environment, if he became a victim, would he have been able to do that? From being bullied, thus learning martial arts, agency, taking agency, to mixed martial arts being non-existent in Ireland, and despite that, believing in his endeavor, and lighting the world on fire. To take this mentality even further, he did not even care about weight divisions. He was always willing to adjust to any rule set to prove his greatness, regardless of weight division. It didn't matter. He believed he could always make it happen. He believed in himself to make it happen. Regardless of his environment, a common theme throughout has remained the same. To take agency for his own destiny, not giving the reins to his life to anyone else, but his own vision, and not victimizing himself due to his unfair condition. Those are the people the curriculum tries to copy. Now, the most interesting thing is, the more ruthless their struggle is, the more difficult, the more unfair. Always in staying patient, consistent against that adversity, learning, adjusting along the way those people always reach the highest. Without that struggle, without that climb, they never would have developed the capacity to climb even higher. He could have complained about the rules and restrictions time and time again, yet instead of that unfairness, instead of victimizing himself to it, what he saw instead was opportunity. That is the choice. To be a leaf blown about by the wind, or to be the wind, to be a victim, or to take the reins where no one else is. Know that if you are in pain, if you are struggling, if your life is absolutely unfair, that curse is also your power. Thus, to ask instead, what does this pain want to teach me? What does this pain have to teach you? How can this resistance help you grow? If you can see opportunity for your own growth in unfair conditions, no. The more difficult the path is, the greater you will become climbing that mountain. This is true in regards to every person you've come to deeply respect, every person who's either accomplished something you admire or has become successful overall. They never do it, being the victim. Now, this truly does make you think. All the students asking for a safe space in their institutions, if you deny conflict, if you deny resistance, just reflect on that for a moment. How would you come out any more enlightened if you weren't subjected to tremendous, tremendous conflict? Just as our jaws shrink when the meat gets tender, our wisdom teeth no longer fit in our mouths, this have to get pulled out, just as our skins dim in pigmentation, the more time we spend indoors, conflict in and of itself is why all creatures and nature exist in the first place, thus naturally it is why we exist. Resistance, conflict is where men and women are born. Humans would have never existed without it. But the mind, it cannot exist without conflict. To be unchallenged for too long, that is where the mind itself ceases to exist. The more we take agency, the more we take pain as a learning opportunity, the higher we ascend. That is the key to our awakening.
It doesn't happen. Carl. It happens in fire. 